This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses, because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. Hello, and welcome to The 1000 Author Show. I am Vicky Quinn Fraser, and this is my husband, Joe. Hello. Hello. How Hello. are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good. We've just had a really nice couple of hours in the garden, haven't we? Yeah. I've been writing my dissertation for my MA year one, mm-hmm. and also being distracted. <laughs> That's not like you. <laughs> and you have been reading a book. I have. And, oh, we might as well go right into that now. Um, what have you been reading, Joe? I've been reading Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, which I think I read as a teenager. Oh, and I have not read it yet. And the reason that Joe's reading the book and that we have the book is that last weekend we were playing D&D with our friends. We were around at our friend's house and her dad was visiting and we got onto the subject. I can't remember how we got onto the subject. But um, I said, um, we were talking about Ursula K. Le Guin and I said, oh, I've never read that book. And he was like, here, you may have this copy that I happen to have with me. And he just gave me one of his copies. He's got loads of copies, which is he's really lovely mm. of him. So, um, and I'm reading currently three other books. So Joe's reading this one at the moment. <laughs> is it I, good? It is. It is good. I love Ursula K. Le Guin. Yeah. But I've only read the Earthsea series so far. So I wanted to read this one as well. Because it's um, gender neutral people, isn't it? Yes. That's the premise of it. Well, I mean, this, that's what we were. That's what we were talking about. That's how we got onto the subject of it. Is it? Yeah, because we were talking about gender and LGBTQ plus stuff, and yeah, and politics and all sorts of things. And we came around to Ursula K. Le Guin. <laughs> so, anyway, so that's what Joe's reading, and I am reading. I've actually literally just finished reading *The Mysterious Affair at Styles* by Agatha Christie. Nice. I did not work out who'd done it, although I, if I'd stuck to my original decision, I would have worked out who'd done it, but oh, I changed really? my mind. Yeah. And anyway, it was more than one person, so I did not That's see cheating. that twist coming. That's totally cheating. What? What's cheating? If the who done it turns out to be a who's done it. I don't know. No, I think that's fair enough. Is it? Well, I mean, the first one that I read, the first one, no, The Murder on the Orient Express, which is not the first Poirot book, but the first one that I read, well... I feel like everybody's seen that or read it except me, but mm-hmm. I also don't want to give spoilers. So if you've never read Murder on the Orient Express or seen it and you don't want a spoiler, then stop listening now. Okay, I'm assuming that everyone stopped listening. Um, loads of people done it. Okay. And that was the point. I was like, loads of people done it. Cool, cool. And thus got away. But the guy who got murdered deserved to be murdered. He got, he'd literally gotten away with, with murder in the States in a kind of double jeopardy way, he couldn't be... Couldn't be tried for it again. Couldn't be tried for it again, so... Mm-hmm. Um, it was a, a justice being... as a vigilante justice thing. Anyway, um, if you were listen, if you were away, then the spoiler is now finished. Not that I, I don't know how... Uh, yeah, never really would, works, does yeah. it? Yeah, but anyway, you spoiler, can come back. spoiler end. You can come back. <laughs> um, so that's what I've just finished reading. But my non-fiction I'm reading at the moment is Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. Which is so good. I love it so much. Um, Her first book is called Let's Pretend This Never Happened. And she just writes the most hilarious stuff about mental illness because she has um, severe depression and anxiety and all kinds of, all kinds of um, mental illnesses. And she's so funny. Like she just, like Joe's making a face like that doesn't sound funny. It's fucking hilarious. She is very, 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 very funny. And I've been reading her blog since the 1990s, like since back in the days when the internet was a baby. Really? Uh, yeah, she was known as the bloggess, or is still known as the bloggess. Okay. Um, and she's just hilariously funny. And she's also, she's got a thing about taxidermy. <laughs> she loves taxidermy, but only from animals that have died of a natural cause. She does okay. not hold with animals being, you know, killed for taxidermy. Not consensually taxidermied. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think you can consent to taxidermy because once, you can't consent to things once you're dead. Did you know that dead bodies have more rights than women in the States right now? Do they? Yeah. Because they can't harvest organs from a dead body without prior consent. But they, um, they, can, they can force a woman to carry a baby to term. Okay. So there you go. Um, yeah. Fuck the Republicans. Um, so, and I'm also still reading My Left Foot by Christy Brown. Okay. Which we talked about last Are you week. actually reading that? Yeah, in bits. Bits and pieces. 
Mm-hmm. So yes. Um, so yeah, this week at the Dingle, we have been plumbing badly. Oh, God, uh, we did a whole bunch of plumbing and then realised that it probably wasn't right because... We're not plumbers. Well, no, no, we, we've made life difficult for future us. Yeah, so we're going to correct that next weekend. We're going to have to move it around a bit. Mm. Yeah. My dad, my mum and dad came over yesterday um, to help, and which is awesome. And dad's always full of good suggestions, one of which was, we shouldn't have done this like that. <laughs> which is true. Which is and true. he was like, he, he texted and was like, oh, I'm really sorry that I wasn't very helpful. I'm like, no, you're super helpful. I was like, he comes over and he works really hard. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we need to replumb the bathroom. And honestly, this morning I was just like, let's just sell the house and buy somewhere that's done. And then I can relax on a Sunday. <laughs> That would be nice. I, I don't mean that, though. I mean, it's not like you've done any plumbing today. I have done no plumbing today, but I have been doing productive, creative things today because I have been writing songs with our friend Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. And Joel. Hi, Joel. Hi, Joel. Um, because this is actually Joe's friend, Ben, who um, does... He probably qualifies as your friend I mean, too. he is, yes, now. He is my friend, too. Um, but they go to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu together, and Ben also occasionally comes to our D&D... Uh, group not often enough not often enough and his character is totally going to get killed off soon yeah um but ben and joel are songwriters and they're really funny and they've written this amazing song called the lawnmower song which is one of the funniest things i've ever heard and i had this idea that because i like i wander through my life singing songs about it don't i and quite often you'll hear me just singing songs about like making pie or cleaning the house or whatever yeah um and i found myself singing songs about writing the other day and i was like why don't i make a bunch of little songs that i can turn into reels on instagram in an attempt to you know get followers and sell my shit and then i was like but i can't i have no talent or concept of how to write music but luckily, um, but luckily ben and joel do so i just texted ben and i was like Dude, I've got this idea. (laughs) And what I loved most about today is that when I showed up with my stupid song lyrics and my idea, they just both looked at me and were like, totally get it, wrote something. And then I was like, that's exactly what I was thinking. And then we banged it together. And I was just like, oh, this is so much fun. It's like people who are as weird as me. (laughs) It was really good fun. So keep an eye on Instagram because over the next few weeks, I'm going to debut my future Tony Award winning tiny songs created by me and Ben and Joel. Um, They're otherwise known as Deadbeats. And uh, should we give them like a tiny, a tiny sample? No, you can't do that. Why? You're going to play something off your phone into a microphone. Okay, shush, 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 shush. Okay. That's all you get. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be great. Okay, so what are we talking about this week, Joe? I have no idea. I've just come in here, sat down, and here I am. We are talking about the Purple Yeti of Resistance. Are we? Yeah. And I've got lots of notes. And now I, I'm not, you know, not sure what I want to say about it now. Okay. Well, okay. So if you've ever read any Stephen Pressfield... Um, or tried to write anything ever, you will know about resistance. And it's like really wanting to do something, but just not doing it for whatever reason. Is it different from procrastination? Yes and no. I think procrastination is a symptom of resistance. So like you'll go and do something else other than the thing that you want to do. Um, in this case, writing. And for me, like, I like to personify things. So it's a giant purple yeti sitting on my chest and squeezing all of the air out of me. And I'm like, I'd really like to get off the floor and sit at my desk and write the thing that I want to write. But actually what's happening is that I'm face down on the floor and there's something sitting on my back. Right. And I can't get up. Um, And sometimes that happens when I need to have lunch as well. But mostly when I want to write something. So I've got this purple yeti sitting on my back and it won't get off and it's just like eating and doing its thing and I'm like, I'd really like to get up now, I'd like to get up now, I'd like to get up now and it just doesn't happen. So, and I think quite a lot of people will understand that, especially when it comes to writing. And there are lots of reasons for it, um, which I'm not going to go into now because I think we've talked about Mm -hmm. a lot of reasons in the past like fear and imposter syndrome and you know all of that all of that good stuff um so today i wanted to focus on pushing through resistance and writing the thing that we want to write okay because that's what we're here for getting it done 
getting it done. And I'm also not gonna like molly coddle and pussyfoot around and beat around the bush and other such um, metaphors for, you know, being particularly nice because ultimately you've got to sit your fucking butt in the seat and do the work, right? That's the, literally the only way your book's going to get written. And I can say lots of like nice, kind things and be like, oh, I'm going to give you like a metaphorical hug. And it's, it's all, you know, it can be really awful and it can be really awful because hello, I've been there. But also ultimately, if you want to get your book written, you've, you've just got to do it. You've just got to do the work. <laughs> okay. What? Why are you laughing? It's true though. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's not much of a strategy, is it? No, it's not. But I just wanted to get that idea into people's heads first that you, you, you've got to do it. You've got to come up with a way to do it and there is no way around it because there's no point in like coming back in a year and being like, oh, I really wanted to write my book, but I just didn't for reasons. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, okay, but you know, you're a year down the road and you've, you've still not done it. So I just wanted to um, give people a few, a bunch of different stuff today that they could try out and think about because I think for like every person who has resistance, there's, you know, at least two or three strategies that they could try, two or three tactics that they could try. So question the first, and this is what I always ask myself, is, is the reason that I'm not writing this because it's not fun? So how can I make it more fun? It's like, A, is the topic that I'm writing about not something that I really want to write about, in which case maybe I need to rethink that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because if, you know, if, if the topic that, and we've mentioned this before, it's like, is is the thing that you're writing about setting your hair on fire? Like, does is it like, oh, I'm really excited about this thing and I need to write about it? Because if that's not the case, then it's always going to be a struggle. Yeah, if the thing you're writing about is unfortunately boring as piss, then... <laughs> You should probably think about writing about something else. Yeah. And, you know, that's really subjective. So, like, if, if it's... Uh, yeah. But if it bores you, you're going to write boring Yeah, exactly. Words. That's that's the thing that we're talking about. Yeah. It's like... And also, I, don't, I, really, I really think that everything can be interesting, given the right angle. But that's because I'm interested in literally everything. So, um, so yes, if you are bored by your idea, you need to... It, that's not the idea for you. You know, you need to think about something else. There needs to be some development or some direction change or something, but that's not right. Yeah. And if if you've been told by somebody, oh, you should write a book about this, and you're like, oh, yeah, I should write a book, should write a book. I really don't want to write this book. It's like, cool, you don't have to. Just because somebody else has told you that you need to write this book, mm-hmm. you don't have to do it. Um, but if it's just like, I really want to write about this, but I'm not finding it fun to write, and you're kind of thinking about it all the time, but you're not actually sitting down to write, then, okay, let's think about how we can make that actual process more fun. Um, And there's a bunch of things that I can, that I do, um, and I just wanted to give you a few of my techniques. Um, So doodling is one of my techniques. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I like to doodle um, about the thing that I'm writing about, and I might just like draw stupid little pictures, and that can be quite a fun way to, and you don't have to be good at drawing, by the way, because nobody else is ever going to see these, Um, but you can kind of like doodle and cartoon your way into writing. Um, you can uh, write about something that you really enjoy for a few minutes. So for instance, if you're currently watching Karen the Emu on the Useless Farm Instagram account, write about her for a bit. And if you're not following the Useless Farm Instagram account, go and do that now because it will bring a little bit of joy into your day every day. Um, You can also trick yourself into writing by starting something entirely different, like write an angry letter about something that currently enrages you. And then when you're fully in your rage flow, switch it to the thing that you want to do. And related to that, choose violence, right? Because everybody's, the Instagram, the Instagram, the Instagram, <laughs> it sounded like an old person. Um, the internet is filled with people being like, oh, good vibes only. And, you know, you've got to be positive about everything all the time. And I'm like, nah, mate, fuck that. Write about things that make you angry to do with your topic. Because we all love a really good rant, And you can choose rage and be ragey about it. And probably there will be some good ideas in there that you can use and start writing about. Does that make sense? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Also, it's like really easy to go on a rant. It it does get, it does get you past the blank sheet of paper, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love a blank sheet of paper. Anyway, um, you can also play a writing game. So you could, and I have, I have a thing for that, which you can buy from my, online shop <laughs> i've got templates <laughs> <laughs> one of them is a bunch of writing games so you could go and craft them but yeah you can play a writing game or you can sing and so as i was saying earlier i make up ridiculous songs while i'm thinking that's actual 
article began as a song. This whole podcast, the, <laughs> the article that the podcast came from began as a song. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that you can try. Um, you could also try writing about something else instead of the thing that you want to write about. So write about not being able to write, write about what's stopping you from writing. Um, kind of Write about why you want to write. Yeah, write about why you want to write. And just be like, oh, what's stopping me from writing? Because sometimes you don't really know. Mm -hmm. And getting to the bottom of what's getting in the way can be really helpful. So it might be that you think one thing is the problem and then you're like, oh, actually, I don't know enough about this specific thing. So you can go and do your research and come back and be like, oh, I know what I'm going to do now. And sometimes it's like thinking it through in your head, which has been a big problem with my um, MA dissertation. has been like, oh, I've got this idea, but I don't know like where it's going to go and it just ended up being a bunch of disjointed things but actually through not writing and thinking about it in my head I've now I've now got a narrative right and so it's become something more sensible um so you could you could do that you could promise yourself that you'll only write one word because by the time you've got to your desk or whatever it is that you do your writing and you've written one word you might as well write another one and then another one because <laughs> otherwise you've just walked to your desk and turned all your shit on and written a word and then gone away again which even if you just do that, it's better than none. You have you have made some progress. Yes. Um, yeah, basically, pick something so small that you can't fail and that it's more effort to not do it than it is to do it. Mm. Which um, isn't really very helpful because I will go to great lengths and put a lot of effort in to do things other than the thing that I would like to be doing sometimes. But sometimes it works for me. Doing all of the other things. No, no, no. Coming and just doing like the little tiniest uh, thing. Sometimes I will... So yeah, I'm not saying that any of these things will work all the time. Some of these things work for me some of the time. Okay. Does that make sense? These are, these are a variety of strategies to have a go at rather yeah. than guaranteed working for you. Yeah, absolutely. I would never guarantee any of this shit works. Nothing ever works for anybody all the time. Um, or you can just choose not to write at all. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do that? Yeah, just don't do it. Um, like physically writing you could just open up your voice notes and start talking mm. that's a that's a way to do it as well you could check over your plan you could look at your chapter plan and go hmm yeah because that's sometimes why you're resisting is like i'm not really clear and in your head like your subconscious is like this doesn't work as it is it doesn't work read so, your chapter plan again yeah go, is this really what i want to do yep um and my favorite thing of all is can you make it a habit because this is like this is so important for me. It's incredibly important. And this is one thing that does work for almost everybody, I think. It's like when you make a habit that is like, you know, when you learn how to drive or something and you autopilot your way to work and mm -hmm. you're, or once when you've you get learned. a train or whatever, once you've learned, yeah. Um, or you get a train or whatever. And it's just like, you just do the thing. So it's like you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth and yeah, you, you know, for, for most of us. get dressed and you get in the car and off you go. <clears throat> yeah, and this is like a, a real coping strategy for me. It's like I can only function with a really tight morning routine and if something breaks my routine, I am basically fucked for the rest of the day. Um, and I really I really struggle. And also, much as I, I enjoy holidays, I also struggle with the lack of my daily routine. So I, I, I find holidays can be quite, um, quite difficult sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see if you can build a habit. Habit stacking is an absolute lifesaver for me so for instance I stagger out of bed and get straight into my running clothes and I'm out the door before I do literally anything else mm -hmm. and I run for like 13 minutes which is oddly specific I know but there you go um, and then I autopilot into my office and do my post-run yoga and then I get into the shower and do all of the you know do all of things make tea come back sit down right and that's like a whole stack of habits and I know that sounds like a whole just a load of stuff in a, in a row which it kind of is but it's really specific. Like, I do it all in a really specific order. It's like this thing, then this thing, then this thing, and then this thing. And one of those things is you sit down and write. Yes, one of those things is I sit down and write. And when my morning routine goes sideways, so do I. Mm -hmm. So that is really useful. And I did not put all of this stuff together all at once, by the way. I think that's really important to say. Like, don't give yourself, like, a massive long list of things to do. It's like, what is a thing that you do without fail every day? For most of us, it's wake up. Um... And so if one of the things that you do every day is like wake up and then you doom scroll social media, don't have your fucking phone in your bedroom. Like if I had my phone in my bedroom, I would not get out of bed. Mm -hmm. Just wouldn't. So um, and like when you're away, I really struggle with getting out of bed in the morning because I take my phone up to bed when you're not here, obviously, in case an axe murderer comes in. Right. Um, and I need to be able to, you know, phone 
the police who are never going to reach me in time. Um, right. Or, you know, you so that you can hear me being axe murdered. Cool, thanks. It's okay. Um, so, but that does mean that when I wake up first thing in the morning, I'm like, oh, my phone's just there. I'm just going to, and before you know it, I'm really struggling to get out of bed. So, um, so yeah, if you if you find that, like, there's, whatever the thing is that you do every day, can you stick another habit onto it? Does that make sense? That does make sense. That does make sense. And then once those are cemented, stick another habit onto it. And for you, like, you don't need a whole morning routine like, like me you just need to find one thing that you do all the time that is then as you do that or when you do that you write sure i mean it's difficult to kind of start writing your book whilst you're brushing your teeth but it's possible it's possible i guess i do but yeah everybody's got a routine everybody's got this sort of stuff that they 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 habitually do yeah it's a lot easier to stack your habits together like that than it is to create a new one yeah and so if it's like oh, i'm just trying to think now so so yeah, if it's like at some point you're going to have your dinner, if you're an evening creative person, it's like you have your dinner and then if you have your notebook or your laptop or whatever, like within reach, it's like when you finish your dinner, it's like, oh, I finished my dinner, last bites, put plates aside, replace with whatever it is that you write on. Mm -hmm. And then you can write for half an hour. That could be a thing that you do. Or like the first thing you do when you get up, it's like, maybe it's like, oh, I've got up, I've brushed my teeth and then I write. And then I have a cup of tea or yeah. vice versa, whatever. So, yeah. Um, and also sandwich it with a reward as well. So once you've done your habit and you've done your writing session, give yourself a reward and get an extra dopamine hit for it. But you will feel good having done the writing anyway, but like have something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. So for me, one of my things is like the second cup of tea. So I'll have my first cup of tea and I'll finish that like way before I finish my writing. And then I'll be like, oh, right, 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 right. And then I'm like, oh, I can have another cup of tea now. It's really nice. I love my morning tea. Um, but also, having said all that, maybe you don't need to do anything at all. Maybe what you actually need to do is fill your creative cup up again. Because maybe you've just been, like, outputting lots. Fill your creative cup? Yeah. How does that work? You can't pour from an empty cup, Joe. Uh... <laughs> Okay, no, go for it. Go on. No, because, like, if you're always putting out, putting out, putting out, putting, and trying to do stuff and, like, putting out content and writing and doing all the things that you do, how much time are you spending inputting things, like ideas, new ideas, and information, and just stuff that can churn around in your brain? Right. So, that could look like anything. So, it might be that you read a book or you watch a movie, or you go to a petting farm and stroke all of the alpacas, or you scroll through every single video that Smack McCrainer has ever put on Instagram, or watch every single video that the Useless Farm has ever put on Instagram, or you read a shitty book, or you watch an entire Netflix series in one go, or maybe you play a computer game, or you go for a walk, or you stare into space, or you talk to people, or you talk to cats, or you spend the morning composing ridiculous songs with equally ridiculous friends. Maybe that is the thing that you do, and then you're like, oh, that's a load of really cool stuff. Now I feel like I can go and write something. Okay. Because you can't just, you can't just be like, write, write, write all the time. Sure, you need some experience, and you need some time, and you need some things. And fun, you need some chill. Things in front of your eyeballs. Yeah, and so sometimes, like, maybe if you're just scrolling Instagram endlessly, like if you're doom scrolling and it's making you miserable, that's not cool. But if you're like scrolling through every single video on the useless farm and it's making you laugh, then that's cool. Maybe this is the thing that you're doing and you're relaxing and chilling out and having fun. <laughs> but I did want you to also know that if you are experiencing resistance and you're finding it really hard to write, you are not broken or lazy or a shitty human. It's just... Sometimes it's really hard. It's really hard to write. And so here are a few things that you can try. Mm -hmm. And also a suggestion that maybe you don't need to do anything. You can just chill for a bit. Maybe right now is not the time for writing. Yes. So what's the takeaway, Joe? Um, try a bunch of different stuff. Uh, if you want to get the writing done, but you're finding it difficult to do so, there's loads of different things you can try. One of which is not doing the writing right now. Yeah. Um, re recognise when you need to refill... Your creative cup. Why did you say it like that? Well. It's a, it does sound a bit wanky. It's a bit wanky. But do you see what I mean? What's a better way of, what's a less wanky way of saying it then? 
I, I don't know. Well, there you go. All right. Fill um, your creative cup. And don't let anyone tell you that your way of refilling is wrong. Because it isn't. Also, here's another thing. If somebody on the internet or in a book or whatever says, um, this is the way that you overcome this. This is the way that you overcome resistance. If that way doesn't work for you, don't assume that there's something wrong with you. Because it's just that their way is not for you. Because there's one, one of the things that writers do, and you know, people who are not writing coaches do, if they because like there's a lot of people who will write a book and then be like, I'm gonna tell people how to write a book because I've written a book. Mm. Which is cool, and I understand the urge to do that because it's like I've done a thing and now I want to tell other people how to do it, and that's cool. But what they tend to do, what we all tend to do in situations like that, is be like, this is how I did it. Mm-hmm. And that's great, except it's not going to work for everybody. So if, and this is this is why book coaches can be so valuable because we've done it ourselves, but also we've worked with a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. And so we know a lot of different things to try. And it's like, I will never, I have never once said to my clients, this is the way to do it. It's like, here is something for you to try. If it doesn't work, come back to me. I have many more things for you to try. So don't ever assume that just because something doesn't work for you, that there's something wrong with you. Because mm. there probably isn't. I'm not going to say definitely because, you know, maybe... Maybe there is. <laughs> maybe there is, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not that there's an, anything wrong with you. It's not even that there's anything wrong with that piece of advice. It's just that telling somebody that this will definitely work is a problem because it might not. Only a fool deal, deals in absolutes. Yeah, I am certain of nothing and not even that. <laughs> but I butchered that quote. Anyway, so... Um, coming up next week, we're going to be talking about, oh, I don't know if I want to talk about that. It's going to be a surprise. Yeah, we're going to talk about something. We're going to talk about something. Um, but in the meantime, Weird and Wonderful is happening at the start of July again. Cool. Weird and Wonderful season three. Um, and I am opening the doors for people to secure their spots in June. So that's next week. But if you want to sneak in the side door, because there are only 10 spots available, if you want to make sure that you get a spot, you can do so. You can give me a shout. You can email vicky and moxie books.co.uk or you can head over to moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash weird and wonderful find out all about it there and if you've got questions if you're like oh i don't know if this is for me um will it suit me you can give me a shout and we'll book a quick call and you can ask me things nice and i will answer cool um otherwise if you're like oh i'm not sure i need like a whole coaching program you can just get started my book breakthrough jam is available to um, to book and you can go to moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash book breakthrough which is a 90 minute thing where we will get your idea nailed down and your outline done and you will know exactly what you're going to do when you sit down to write if you are struggling to form a writing habit and want to develop your skills a little bit then you can get free writing prompts at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash calendar yeah that is a whole month's worth of writing prompts to get you moving yep absolutely and um that's it if you've listened to every episode oh my god why won't you delete don't worry about it just don't read it oh but it, it, it's there just don't read that thing why oh that's because i've turned my keyboard off <laughs> that'll do it <laughs> um could have just not read it <laughs> frantically adjusting the notes <laughs> unable to not read that sentence <laughs> how dare you if you've listened to every episode <laughs> then email us with yeah. your postal address and we'll send you a special super fan gift smiley face <laughs> <laughs> you're such a mean man um, if you like this podcast although frankly after the last 45 seconds i can't imagine why um you can go subscribe at itunes that would be amazing um and if you would leave us a review that would be totally awesome five stars yeah or maybe four based on today um, <laughs> um and please share it if you know somebody who will enjoy this nonsense send them a link Thanks so much for listening, Joe. Thank you for <laughs> being mean today. Thanks. Um, <laughs> no worries. Uh, thank you to Podfly, as always, for doing an amazing job of this. And thank you to Harriet for keeping me on track. And thank you to you, dear listener, for giving up your valuable time to listen to me babble like a fool. Nice. Which is what I feel like I've done today. This is not my best work. <laughs> Tune in next week for a better effort. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast, where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to. Mm-hmm.